352-873-4368. That's 352-873-4368. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Four minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. In a in a state that sometimes seems like it never is going to cool down, we got some cool weather coming tonight and tomorrow night, right? In fact, we had some cool weather this weekend, sort of, kind of. Not yeah. cold. I mean, not, if you're from Wisconsin, you're saying what? It wasn't cool at all. <laughs> but tr- trust me, it was cool. You know, you could sleep with the windows open. Yeah. Right. Fabulous. And did it help with your sleep? I mean, were you able to sleep better with that? I think so. I like it that way. Me I like too. when you can hear stuff like birds or whatever's going on outside. Uh huh. You know, except for the neighbor, that guy okay, I can do without. But other than that, yeah, I like that the way. Might it's- be interesting <laughs> though. Uh, let's talk about our sleep, Doctor Phyllis C Z. MD, PhD, is on the phone. She's the Chief of Sleep Medicine in the Department of Neurology at Northwestern University. The new How America Sleeps and Wakes Sleep Study that impacts veterans is the topic today. Oh, perfect timing, too. Uh, Dr. Z, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. Did you get a good night a good night's sleep last night? It was a little early today, but yes, I did get a good night's sleep. (laughs) So um, did this uh, particularly focus on veterans who had PTSD, or was it all veterans? No, this was a survey uh, about um, how America sleeps and wakes. So it was more about those individuals who actually were diagnosed with insomnia or who had chronic difficulties uh, with sleep. And what did the results tell you, and how do you use that information? Well, you know, it's, it's such a common problem, having problems with your sleep, especially chronic problems. It affects about 30% of the general population. And whether you're, in, especially if you're an older person, that could be as high as 57 to 60%. So it's a really big problem uh, in this country. Do we and use... The, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. So what the uh, American Sleeps and Wake Survey uh, highlights is not only the importance of sleep for health, which is clearly important, but also that how you sleep during the night affects your daytime function and your wake function. And not only does it affect those people who suffer from insomnia, but also those who live with people with insomnia, that how a person sleeps during the night affects those people who live in the same household of how they are going to be feeling during the day. Now, when you have been uh, doing the study and uh, the uh, participants filled out the surveys, and if they are veterans, did you have any questions in there about if they were experiencing PTSD? Uh, I don't remember uh, that uh, specifically, but I think it's really important that the, this, the, 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 the responses would affect all people with uh, insomnia. Uh, they're representatives of people with insomnia, including veterans. So if one person is having a sleep issue and it affects the rest of the family, do doctors treat the whole family? Well, doctors don't typically think that. That's why this survey is so important, Ah. because it it really brings to light that we should be asking about how is it affecting the family member. Because if they're they're not feeling well during the day, if their quality of life is impaired, that could also negatively affect, of course, their own health. And so what, it's really important to think of it as a family issue. And what about the people that work the different shifts? Uh, do people have more trouble sleeping if they work the midnight shift than if they Indeed. work the daytime? Indeed, shift work is a you know, affects about twenty five percent of our uh, population, and sh- working against the clock when you're trying to when you're sl- when you're working when you're supposed to be sleeping can certainly affect the quality of your sleep. And how about people that have high anxiety jobs like law enforcement? Well, uh, stress can also uh, negatively impact your sleep. And again, this is why it's so important to be able to talk to your doctor 
and describe your you know your 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 audiences and if they have problems with with their sleep so it says also about waking um I don't know how unusual I am, but I do not use uh, an alarm clock, and I always get up at the time I need to. Oh, my. I always use an alarm clock. I always clock. do. I don't know. It's, it's just, you know what? Years ago, when I had an alarm clock, I'm talking like 50 years ago. <laughs> I, I, I'm not exaggerating either. I, I just threw it away. I said, you know what? Uh, I don't like the alarm clock. I can do this. I can get up at the time I need to. Mm-hmm. Well, you have a good biological clock <laughs> <laughs> okay I th- maybe i should have asked a question with that statement is that healthy i mean am i doing something that's just a, a matter of training because i think it's a a better feeling just waking up instead of being a jolted awake by that thing on the on the nightstand <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you're not sleep deprived, actually, we should be waking uh, on our own and at a regular time. And again, I think the survey points out and highlights that it's about waking function, that sleep is for you to wake well and to have good quality of life as well as performance during the day. How do the people know they actually have a problem uh, with this other than something going wrong in in their lives and that's why they're losing sleep yeah if you have a chronic problems with either staying asleep or falling asleep or waking up too early and that that is associated with consequences during days such as impairment of daytime functioning and it's a chronic problem then you may have insomnia it's really important to talk to your doctor about it so the part I wanted to ask you about in your description of what you do, the word medicine, I, I don't know, I, obviously medicine doesn't always mean like a pharmaceutical product, but are, is that part of it also? Does that, are there sometimes, we, you know, we, we tend to think that sleeping pills are only in the absolute need. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, treatment of insomnia is pretty individualized, and it can take uh, behavioral uh, approaches. Sometimes one can use medications. Again, it has to be individualized, and it's really important for your audience if they're suffering from insomnia or chronic difficulties with their sleep to, again, discuss this with their uh, provider uh, and or their doctor. And how about the couples, you know, that, that sleep together and one person has this problem, thereby keeping the other person awake, uh, does that person now going to be into this uh, sleep deprivation and that's going to be a problem for them if the other partner doesn't get it treated? Well, as you see from the, from the survey, the, if the partner who has the difficulty with sleep, that actually affects the partner who does not have difficulty normally with their sleep. But more so, it's really about the daytime functioning. So either they're able to sleep, how your partner sleeps affects the way you feel during the day and affects your quality of life. I think that's really important in that when you think about the impact of insomnia, it really affects the entire household. So Robin brought something up that made me think of the the devices we see advertised that can help you with snoring or maybe even something more serious like sleep apnea. Are those devices, I don't know, like like clips or, or tapes or things like that, are they effective? Again, it really depends on the individual and which devices uh, we're talking about. If you have trouble with your sleep, please go see a doctor or at least discuss this with your uh, care provider. The website that we were given is EISAI.com. What is that? The website that uh, your audience can go for more information about uh, sleep, insomnia, is, is dayafterinsomnia.com. Oh, okay. I had the wrong e- e- uh, That's the one we website. were given. Okay. So dayafterinsomnia.com. And, Correct. And, 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 uh, and I'm guessing this is just because I observe things like this. Uh, your last name being Z, it's like a perfect person to talk about catching some Zs. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's absolutely perfect, and I married into it. Nice. <laughs> um, so so um, the uh, the best thing for our audience to do, let's say we've captured somebody's attention, they, they've, they've had sleep issues for a while, the best thing for them to do, aside from, in addition to seeing the doctor, I would say, is go to the website? Go to the website and always think about Sleep is a pillar of health. It's important to prioritize uh, your sleep, whether you have a sleep problem or for some of us who just are just not getting enough sleep because we're doing other things. Is uh, a nap in the middle of the day a bad thing or a good thing? Mm. A nap during the day, uh, if you plan it, it's part of your siesta. The data shows that it's okay. But if you're napping because you're too sleepy during the day, that may be a sign that you're not getting enough sleep. Oh, I need a siesta, Robert. <laughs> there need... you go. Uh, Dr. Phyllis C.Z., thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Come join us at the 38th Annual Downtown Festival in Art Show, November.